I was actually getting ready for work and a weird number called me. I just thought to myself, if it's important, they'll leave, leave a message. Well, as soon as it stopped ringing, a voicemail came up and um, it was a sergeant and he said, I need you to call me back as soon as possible um, because we need to discuss the health status of your husband. beginning of a, of a couple day mission and Josh's job for the mission was to use the metal detector and sweep for IEDs uh, while the rest of us followed behind. We're crossing this big field and I'm in the back of the formation and we just hear a loud explosion and I look up and I see a lot of dust and debris at the very beginning of our um, formation. So I knew right away that somebody got hit, but it didn't really click in my head who it was um, until the machine gunner who was right behind me said uh, the name Wetzel. So I immediately ran to the front of the formation where somebody was already applying a tourniquet to one of his legs. And um, when I got to him, the very first thing he tells me is, uh, hey doc, did you see the backflip that I did? I said, no, I, I think I missed it. I was way in the back. He said, well, it was pretty epic. flying through the air and I did a couple of flips and I landed on the ground and as soon as I hit the ground I knew I probably didn't have legs but I didn't want to look. My medic came to me and he started working on me you know right off the bat and you know he was my best friend. As soon as he was blown up his medic ran over to him and was kind of freaking out asking him if he's okay and the first thing Josh said was did you see that sick flip I just did? He started working on me, he was shaking, he was all frantic, and I was, I can remember just telling him, man, listen, like, we're gonna be okay, and we're gonna get through this. And I kinda talked him off the ledge. I mean, it should have been the other way around, but I knew I was gonna be okay, but he didn't. The whole time he was joking, he never really went into a, um, you know, quiet stage, or, um, I, we, were, we sat on him for about 40 minutes, and the whole time he was having, you know, regular conversation with us about what he was going to do when he got home and uh, how his recovery was going to be. You know, I was just joking around, having a good time, talking about, you know, when they get back, we're going to go, you know, have a barbecue and invite all of our families. We're just going to have a good time. Like, While that's like completely inappropriate to even say, you know, there's so much more going on than amputations. And when I found out that Josh was doing all those things, I just knew that it was the same guy that I married. When it was time for me to fly to DC, I get to Walter Reed Hospital and I just remember like going around the corner and he's like laying in the bed and he was so apologetic. My exact words were, I went over there and I lost my legs. And she just looked at me and she was like, Josh, I'm gonna be honest with you. like." We know where they're at. We're just not going to go back and get them. I was like so overjoyed to see him that I didn't care about legs or how he looked or anything like that. Um, I just knew that that worst fear of a uniformed person coming to my door, like that didn't happen. For the first probably four or five months, I was in the actual hospital in the hospital bed. Overall, I probably went through over 30 
surgeries altogether. Naturally, I lost a lot of weight and a lot of muscle and everything. And in between all of that, I was still going to rehab and to just get my core strength back up and my strength in general. When Josh got hurt, my life was completely turned upside down. I think the hardest part of it was just that Josh was the one that was the head of our household. And he went from that to not being able to feed himself, not being able to brush his own teeth. And so I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to take care of him while keeping his dignity intact. It was so hard because at that point, you don't know, is he gonna walk again? Are we gonna be able to do normal things? Or is this like, is this my role in life from now on? Now I'm gonna stand next to my wife and feel like a man. How it's coming out of your head. He's moving. In August of 2012 is when I finally got my legs. Just so happened that the day I went in there with my legs for the first time, I got to meet Gary Sinise, who played Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump, so that was pretty cool. So I always grew up loving Auburn, and you know, you grow up and there's the Auburn family, and you know, everybody's kind of tied together with that, and you know, I didn't ever really feel it until after I got injured and people were sending me cards and calling me and reaching out on my Facebook page to either just tell me War Eagle or you know, try to get me to come to school there. And that's when I really started feeling like the Auburn family. It wasn't just a, you know, a marketing scheme at that point for me, it was, it was real. It was just like they immediately claimed us and they were proud of us. It really was like when a recruit commits to Auburn and then everybody at Auburn's like, yeah, he's ours, he's coming to Auburn, he's coming to Auburn. That's how people treated us. They don't have to care. They don't have to, they don't have to, you know, take time out of their day or use funds to travel people up to check on us. Look at what this community is doing for us. I mean, how could I not love Auburn after this? The fact that I don't have regular legs, I have to put on metal legs every single day, that does not define who I am. It's not a handicap to me. I mean, while it does suck every now and then, I mean, it sucks to wear boots for a long time. I mean, it's the same thing to me. We just believe that we have a choice. We can either be extremely upset and self-grieving and sad about our situation because it is sad to have only had legs for 27 years of your life. I mean, that's, that's hard. And to know that you'll never get them back and the ugly truth of your health might get actually get worse from this point. For us, we just feel like there's a bigger and worse alternative and that's that Josh was injured that day and he didn't survive. I think Josh is so positive because of his support that he has between his wife and his family and where he's from. He knows that he needs to be positive to keep us positive because like I said, his, per his positive personality is so contagious. Matter of fact, every year on the anniversary of when I got blown up, I, you know, I put a thing out on Facebook thanking the person who did this to me. My marriage is stronger than it's ever been. I have two beautiful daughters. I graduated from the school of my dreams and now I work at the school of my dreams where my wife works as well. Josh is, a, is the most forward thinking person that I've ever met. Josh just does not waste any energy or any time thinking about something that's not going to help today, right now. The person who did this to me actually did me a favor. What was meant for evil turned out to be great. I'm, I'm doing better now than I was. And so my story is not a sad story at all. I mean, what happened, some people may see him as like, oh, that's really sad. No, no, I don't think that. I don't think that it's a really sad thing. Help, grabbing my head. <laughs> Who I am now and what I'm doing and 
my family, that's what is defining what's going on in my life, not the fact that I don't have legs. And it all started with a bad day at work.